Hello, in this video, I thought I would share a big change that I did on a client. She came in with really long, thick hair, and she said, do whatever you want. So after a long consultation and figuring out how she styles her hair, how long she has in the morning to style her hair, what her lifestyle was like, and looking at her head shape, I looked at her crown, around her nape area, around her facial area. I stood behind her and pulled her hair back away from her face and looked at her in the mirror. I did all of these things so that I would be able to help her make a decision on a haircut that would make her happy. In the end, we decided to do a A-line bob cut with some layering to it. She has very thick hair. She has, I should take that back. She has a lot of hair, but it's fine. It looks like in the, just right at first when I looked at her before touching her hair, I thought it was gonna be really coarse, but it wasn't. It was actually on the finer side, but she has a lot of it. And she has a lot of wave to her hair. And she wants to take advantage of that and be able to let it go curly or um, be able to wear it smooth or if she chose to curl it and wear it kind of um, just tossily and loose waves, she could do it. So we decided on an A-line bob. So as you can see, as I was talking, I uh, mapped out the haircut. And what I mean by that is I divided the head shape into four panels. This allows me um, to be able to work in a disciplined manner and not get lost in the haircut. And it helps me to stay balanced in my haircut. So I just uh, find the apex, which is the very top of the head, and um, take a section straight down on one side to the ear and one on the other side of the ear, and then all the way to the front, to the frontal bone and between the eyebrows, and then all the way down into the nape. This separates the head shape into four panels and it makes it much easier to stay on point when you're hair cutting. Next, as you can see, I chose to sit in a stool. The styling chairs that uh, we I use in my salon, they don't go up very high. So, and I, it's very important when you're cutting a haircut like this to be eye level with your work. Now I've already checked her hairline so I'm, I know what's going on. She doesn't have a lot of calyx or movement in her hairline, although she does have a low hairline. So what I was checking there, as you saw me move kind of off to the side was, I was just kind of looking and making sure with my comb, if I cut that first length at that length, where is it gonna go in the front? So I just kind of took my comb and kind of angled it forward to see where it was going to exit out the front. And what I mean by that is I want it slightly A-line. So I want to have it short in the back, moving longer to the front, and we want it to hit just below the chin. So making that first haircut or that first guide is so important when you're cutting a bob cut. Um, if it's too long, it's not going to look right. So, and this is where a lot of, um, a lot of hairstylists, I know I speak from my own experience, I was always like nervous to cut that very first section because it is so short. But here, as you can see, I'm using some artistic disciplines that help keep me on point here. And I'm gonna point them out now. First, as you can see, I'm taking my comb and I'm entering the comb and I'm using a diagonal parting. Now, depending on how fast or slow I make that diagonal, it's going to determine the angle of my bob. Because the angle that I'm taking, the diagonal, the diagonal that I'm taking and my parting, I'm going to mirror with my comb. And then I mirror my comb with my scissors. These are just little disciplines that I recommend using when you're cutting your bob so that you you stay on point and you don't end up losing that geometric shape, that nice A-line that you're trying to get. So you can see that I'm moving from side to side. So I make sure that my exit points 
or even on both sides. This keeps me um, balanced on either side. And as you're watching me work, I'm working side to side. I'm making sure I'm taking a section that is thin enough that I can see the guide below. And I'm closing my shears and going in underneath the hair just to lift it out enough so that I can see my guide. And then just mirroring my scissors with my comb over the top. I want to maintain a one length here on the bottom. I want strength in the perimeter. And if I elevate the hair at all, I'm going to remove the strength that I'm trying to create on my bob cut. So uh, remember, when you're cutting a one length, it's cut at natural fall and zero elevation. And when you talk zero elevation, you that that entails not only pulling the hair out from the head, but it entails pulling the hair um, maybe a little over to the right or over to the right away from where it lives. But also that means not pushing it into the neck area as well. So by using your scissors and, and closing them completely and then kind of going in underneath that section of hair that you're going to cut, it keeps you from pushing the hair into the neck. And the reason that's important is during my consultation, when I was talking about everything I was looking for on my client, I also took my hand and ran it down the back of her head. And I did that because I wanted to feel what her occipital bone was like. A lot of times you have clients that have a really prominent occipital bone. And if you're not aware of that and you're cutting a one length bob, and you're pushing that hair into the neck while you're cutting, your end result is gonna end up being more graduation because you're pushing that hair into the nape and it's not cut at natural fall. Now here as I'm moving into the rest of the hair, I'm just kind of pulling it down and freehanding it. Now I'm moving into the side of her head here. So I'm combining the back panel with the right panel. Now, if you notice, I'm still keeping a fast diagonal on the hair, but because I'm on a wider plane, it does look slower. And because I wanna make sure that it's A-lined, a real great tip here is just taking the hair, combing it down in its natural fall, but tucking it behind the ear. That just um, enables, it's just an easy, easy, easy trick to do to create that a line and not um, and not have a little deviation there because that ear pokes out and can cause a little bit of a little bit of a uh, dip there if you're not aware of that the hair has to travel over the ear. Uh, there's nothing more frustrating than to be going in, finishing your bob, and seeing a little deviation there in the ear, and also to find that you've squared it off a little bit. So that, that little tip of taking the hair and tucking it behind the ear really helps a lot. I encourage you to try it. But remember, you still want to make sure that you don't comb the hair back from where it lives. You comb it straight down and then tuck behind the ear. Uh, watch as I do it on this side. The other thing I wanna point out that I'm doing as well is uh, I'm still eye level. That's so important. It's not only important for, um, you know, your cut, being able to really see where you're cutting, but it's also important for your body and uh, taking care of yourself. Because when you're hunched over, um, it's really hard on your back and your shoulders. So, so as you can see here, I combed it down, but then I just tucked it behind the ear and pulled it back to where I want to cut. And then I'm just combing it and letting it fall, letting it bounce. As you can see, I can see my guide and I'm just cutting, just cutting it um, with its, you know, without any tension at all. Now I want to talk a little bit about the tools I'm using. The comb I'm using is a longer comb. Um, it is actually a comb that I purchased through Jacqueline Pro. They are actually a color company. I love their color. Um, they absolutely do not even stain the scalp. It's amazing. Um, but 
but I, they have tools and this comb is their, uh, their long comb, their long cutting comb. And I love it when I'm cutting uh, clients with long hair, I'm doing a lot of layering or I'm working with hair such as this, a client that has a lot of hair. It works wonderfully. It has a side where the teeth are a little bit wider for where I'm at right now. I'm up in the crown area. This is the area where we have a lot of calyx and swirls, and I really want to make sure that there is no tension. So by using the side of your comb that has the wider teeth um, really keeps you from creating tension, but the teeth aren't so wide that I can't control it. So anyway, that is something that um, you can get um, on my on my website. You just hit the you know the shop page, hit Jacqueline Pro, and Make sure you put in there that you are a pro and sign up and you can get those scissors. And the, or the scissors, I'm sorry, the comb. <laughs> the scissors I'm using are a seven inch shear. I like using a seven inch shear when I'm cutting bobs. The reason I like using them is because the more you open and close your shear, the more it opens up your uh, chance for having um, deviations in your haircut. The less you're opening and closing your shears, the more precise your cut's going to be. And trust me, it saves so much time on your cutting. So anyways, um, those uh, shears that I'm currently using in this one are by um, uh, Silver Fox. And um, you can find those. I, I will actually put a link to that in the comments below. I kind of um, stuttered over that because I am changing the scissors that I'm going to be using and uh, I would like to share those. But in this video, I am using a different kind of shear, so I will post that in the comments below. So now that we've finished the cutting and we've done a nice, I've created the perimeter that I want, um, I'm going to, I, I recommend drying the hair. I'm not, you know, and that's when I put in the layers, that's when I really fine tune it and make it hers. I, um, but the, the key point here is to, when you're going to fine tune the hair dry, you want to make sure that you dry the hair completely smooth, not with a round brush, not with volume. You want to be able to dry it, um, at its natural fall, just like we cut it so that when you're fine tuning it, you're seeing how it's going to live dry. Now, granted, my client has, has shared with me that she's going to wear it curly a lot, but she wants to be able to wear it smooth as well. So that is one of the main reasons I'm going through and uh, blow drying it smooth. Now, I am using a paddle brush and I'm using my dryer. Uh, I want to make note of what I'm doing here. I am taking it section by section. I am not, um, I, I'm not elevating it up. I'm just I'm blow drying it as low elevation as possible. I am using a paddle brush on her hair and I'm using a nozzle on my dryer. So I just want to point out how the nozzle is going down on the hair. That's just an important tip to remember because I want the hair to be shiny and I want to really collapse that hair shaft. So once I've blow dried the hair smooth, now I'm going to go through and do all the detailing. I'm just going through and picking it up and I am point cutting and creating some movement and texture in the hair. Still maintaining, by the way, that nice A-line in the front, even though she wants um, some layering and some movement and wants me to lighten up the weight in it a bit. I want to be careful not to take out that pretty um, A-line um, that I've created in the front. It's very easy to uh, round out that corner and then you lose the impact of your style that you've, you've been working so hard on. Thing I want you to take notice on is that I'm working behind her. When you're fine tuning your haircut, it's, it's visual. This is where your artistic eye comes in. I'm working behind the mirror. Periodically I'm looking in the mirror and seeing how it falls. I'm literally looking at the hair and 
deciding, oh, it's too bulky here. I'm going to take some weight out here. Um, I want a little bit, I want to lighten it up a little bit here. I'm going to point cut here. Now, mind you, I am going straight into the hair. I am not, um, I'm not going in at an angle. I'm going straight in because I do want to, um, I want it to look soft. I don't want it to look choppy. So I just want to pause here as you're watching me cut. Um, first of all, I just want to thank you so much for those that have subscribed to my channel. It's been fun watching my channel grow and I've really enjoyed watching the comments come in and responding. Um, and I will, those of you that have requested some certain haircuts, trust me, I am working on them and they will come out. Um, I want to encourage you, if you're not a subscriber, I would love it if you would subscribe. Um, and if you like the video, let me know. It encourages me and keeps me going. And if you know somebody that, that my channel might help, um, I'd love it if you'd share it with them. Also, if you are a newer hairstylist or one that is struggling a bit, I encourage you to visit um, my website, On Point Hair Academy. Um, you can go on there. I have a blog that um, I release one every month, and it's on building your clientele. Um, it, it's a way to own your chair like a pro, and what I mean by that is that no matter where you work at, whether it's in a no appointment at, um, salon or you're in a salon suite, the chair that you work behind is your business, and you need to learn to own it, and I want to be an encourager of that. So um, I encourage you to visit my website and um, subscribe to get my emails and newsletters and um, um, get inspired by all the tips that I share with you from my 40 years experience. I have worked in every aspect of this industry and I know what it's like to not only be a new hairstylist, but one that has re had to rebuild her business um, at least four or five times in my career. And I know how to build a business behind the chair and I'd love to help you with that. Also, I have a uh, course that's getting ready to launch called Classics of Haircutting. And if you are interested in um, becoming a precision haircutting specialist or just want to really master your haircutting skills, I encourage you to, um, to check it out because I know it's going to be an awesome um, course for you. So here I am detailing the rest. I want to make sure that um, my line is nice and clean and perfect. And um, so I'm going through and just cleaning up any points that I see. But I'm also going in because I did share with you earlier that uh, my client has a lot of hair. So I'm just kind of taking it section by section and just removing a little bit of weight. And as you can see, I'm just going in, just using the very, very edge of my shear. And as I'm entering that section, as I'm pulling away, I'm closing the shear. And by doing that, I'm not taking a big chunk. I'm just taking light, small pieces as I'm exiting the hair. And when you cut in this manner, it just minimizes that bell shape. It takes the weight out, um, but you don't see the lines. The client's not going to feel like she's got little holes in her hair. It just really softens and diminishes the weight where you want to remove it. It's really important that you use a shear that has a, a really pointy um, edge to it when you're cutting. There again, um, the shears that I'm using in, um, in this particular video, they are by Silver Fox and also they're called Hiroki shears. That's just a, um, another brand within that line. And I am using those shears in this video. Um, as of this video, those are on my website. You can go on there and look to see about purchasing them. I'll also post the link in, a, in a comments below. But be looking in the future. I have some amazing shares I'm going to be working with, and um, I just feel like they're going to be super helpful for you as well. Now for the final fine tuning, I like to sit and have my client kind of shake her head around a little bit and double check to see if I missed any pieces 
that might show up. I always think about it like when I'm sitting in church and I have a person in front of me that has a bob and I see a little piece, it drives me crazy. So um, I like to have my client shake her head from side to side and just look at it and do that a few times and move it around with my hands. Those are just really important things to do just to ensure the quality of your haircut. And then taking the time, I always glance in the mirror, make sure everything looks good, and then uh, it'll be time for her to see it. But taking the time to look at it all the way around in the mirror just gives you another uh, view of it. And doesn't she look beautiful? Thank you so much for watching. Hey, hit the like button. Let me know if you like this video and better off um, subscribe. And uh, I just want to thank you for watching and happy haircutting.